Hey friends, it's Rachel. Welcome back to my channel. I hope everyone had a lovely Christmas because that is the topic of today's video. It is once again time for another Christmas book haul. Originally, I thought that I would just be getting copies of books that I had already read and enjoyed, which is of course the safest plan to avoid disappointment, but it's also not very exciting. And this is Christmas and it's nice to have something completely new to look forward to. So in the end I got three physical books and three ebooks and one of those is a book that I have already read but did not yet own. And that is Murder at the Brightwell by Ashley Weaver. This is the first book in the Amory Ames mystery series. There are seven of them and I have read and enjoyed all of them. This is a historical cozy mystery series that takes place in the 1930s and follows Amory Ames and her husband Milo as they get caught up in various murder mysteries that happen. In this first book, they are staying at a hotel called the Brightwell and one of the guests is found dead. Emery and Milo's relationship is kind of rocky at the beginning of the series and they attempt to fix it as the series goes on. I'm not going to spoil you and tell you whether they succeed in that or not, but I will say that this series does have a dash of romance to it because of their relationship, so if you like mysteries that have some romance to it. I think you will very much enjoy this series. And I will say I think there are some romance authors out there who could learn a lot from Milo's character. I typically don't enjoy cozy mysteries. I like murder mysteries to be a little bit gritty, nothing graphic, but since you are dealing with crime I do typically like it if it's a little bit more gritty than what you would typically find in a cozy mystery, but surprisingly enough I did enjoy this series very much and now I have the first book again that I can reread whenever I like. Next we have Can't Catch My Breath and Out of My League, both by Sarah Sutton. These are YA romances and I have read and enjoyed both of the first two books in Sarah Sutton's newest series, which is the Most Likely Two series, and those are the reasons why I can't say that I hate all romance because I don't. There are at least two romances that I liked, so I picked these up and I'm eager to give them a try. I really want to read Can't Catch My Breath first because it interests me more. The premise of this book is that the main character is paired with the love interest for a class project, but it's very awkward because there was a car accident that left the love interest's father paralyzed and the main character's father died in that accident. And so there's awkwardness between them and it deals with subjects like grief, the loss of a family member, and this is not something that I see very much in YA. And obviously it's not a cheerful topic, but I do think it's an important one and it's just not expressed enough in YA. I think that this is a very pivotal, important time in a person's life and to have to go through something like that as well. It's important and meaningful, I think, to portray it in stories so that people who go through something like this can see themselves reflected in those stories. I think oftentimes in YA you just have situations where the main character's parents are divorced or they're separated or one or both of the parents are dead, but if they're dead it usually happened at a very young age and so we really don't see the character struggle with that as much as I personally would like to see. It doesn't really feel very realistic and it certainly isn't very deep, so I'm very curious to see how this book tackles and explores such a difficult subject and balances that out with the sweet aspect of the story that would be the romance. And then with Out of My League the premise is that the main character is publicly dumped by her boyfriend at a party and the captain of the baseball team witnesses this and decides to step in and help her because she's obviously embarrassed by this. He says that they are together and so they kind of enter into a fake dating relationship which obviously is fake at the beginning until people catch feelings and I just think that that dynamic is interesting. It's interesting to think that there would be somebody who would do that for you if you found yourself in a humiliating situation such as that, and they would be willing to kind of jump in and help you out with that. So that's what drew me to this story. Next we have The Saltwater Air by Cassidy Clark. The premise of this book is that there are two kingdoms and the main character is the princess of one of those kingdoms and these two kingdoms are enemies. And in order to save her friend, the main character hatches a plot to kidnap the prince from the enemy kingdom, but when she does so, she realizes that she is in fact from that other kingdom, and it's kind of like she was stolen away from that kingdom at a young age, she didn't realize she was actually from there, and now she has to navigate this new world and this new family that she finds herself in. And obviously I haven't read it yet, so I don't know a great deal about it, but this is something that interests me a lot, the idea that you have an heir from another kingdom who was stolen away for whatever reason and they don't realize that's who they really are, especially in this book given the dynamic that the kingdom that she's actually from, that she was stolen from originally, is 
her enemy and that's how she views them and that's how she's thought of them for a long time and come to find out it's actually her family. So I think there would be a lot of confusion and a lot of conflict for this character to navigate and like I said the stolen heir is just something that really interests me as like a trope I guess or a plot point so I'm interested to see how this book explores that. Then we have How We Rise by Brooke Riley. So just from reading the synopsis of this book it sounds like a modern sort of YA dystopian. I'm not exactly sure. You have characters who are caught up in a rebellion or decide to become part of the rebellion against the government because there's lots of government overreach. And this is another thing that I'm a sucker for. Any story with a rebellion that is rising up against an evil regime or an oppressive regime, I'm all for that. I love stories like that and props if the evil oppressive regime is also an empire. I don't think that's the case in this case because it takes place in America. The blurb mentions that one of the characters moves back to Texas and so it'll be curious to see how this story pans out. It reminds me a lot of The Hunger Games, the concept of it. Obviously Pan Am was once known as North America and stories like that just appeal to me. So it'll be interesting to see how it handles that and how it portrays the government overreach and what that looks like and all that stuff. So excited for that. And the last book on this list is Her Dark Reflection by Haley Jade, which is a Snow White and the Seven Dwarves retelling. That's what drew me to this book initially. It basically tells the story from the point of view of the Evil Queen, which I have not seen Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. I don't really want to. I did see Snow White and the Huntsman or whatever. That movie, it was, well, you wasn't great but that's as close as I've come but I do know like the general gist of the story and that in the Disney version the evil queen was just kind of evil because reasons and that's not a very good reason I when, you, when the villain doesn't have a motivation it's not a great story and so I like stories that take something like that from folklore or mythology or something and flesh it out and give the villain a reason and that was one of my biggest hopes when Disney started doing their live action remakes that they would actually take the story and improve upon it and flesh out the characterization but that didn't really happen except for maybe in Cinderella which I think is the best retelling that they've done so far and I'm really not hopeful for any of the future ones but regardless that's a tangent. This book is a story that is supposed to explain how the evil queen became queen and became evil and so the main character wants power at all costs and so she makes a deal with some magic stranger which is obviously dangerous and she's determined to use that bargain to get the crown so i was really curious to see how this book chose to betray her character how she schemes and what sort of machination she comes up with to try to get the crown however as i'm looking at the blurb right now there is a trigger warning at the bottom that says that this book is kind of explicit and I'm not really excited about that and then it also says that you can see the full list of triggers on the author's website. I'm really not loving that. I didn't see that before I added the book to the list so that's unfortunate but it is an ebook. Ebooks are cheaper which is why I took a chance on these books specifically. The other ones that I got in physical form aren't much of a risk so I got these new books as ebooks because they're cheaper. I'll just I'll still give the book a try. Obviously these issues will have to be dealt with as they come up in the book and I'll make a game time decision as it were as to whether or not I'm willing to read this. The premise does very much interest me. It just depends on how explicit it gets and what it chooses to portray. It does worry me a little bit though because I just prefer not to read those kinds of things. You can write whatever you want of course but sometimes subtlety is best and that's personally the method that I choose to go with but Again, a game time decision will be made for this book, but I don't know if I will finish it and because of that I'm a little bit leery going into it, so that definitely knocks the book down on my list a little bit. I'm not as eager to read it as I would be otherwise and I think I will read some of the other ones before I attempt to read that, but we will see. There you have it. Those are the books for this Christmas book haul. It's just a short little list, a short little video, but I hope you found it entertaining or that you got some value out of it or maybe that it introduced you to some books that you might want to read that sound interesting to you or maybe books that you very much want to stay away from. Regardless, if you enjoyed this video feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content. I appreciate each and every one of you and I will see you in the next video. Bye!